In today's episode of Mummy Talks, we are joined by Dr. Charles Muteshi to discuss about process factor in pregnancy. Stay with us, I'm Catherine Karongo. Resus factor in pregnancy. I see a lot of women talk about it. Maybe we can begin by just defining what is resus factor in pregnancy and why does it matter? Uh, resus is uh, one of the special uh, markers of our blood groups. Uh, generally, we have uh, about uh, four blood groups. So A, B, and O, mm-hmm. and then a combination of A and B. And uh, resus takes the connotation of a positive or negative. Mm-hmm. So if you are resus positive, then uh, you have this special marker on your red cells that can be identified as the resus factor. Mm-hmm. If you haven't got that, then uh, we would say you are resus negative. So why does it matter in pregnancy? It matters because uh, just like all blood groups, they are named to identify how cells um, look at each other. Mm-hmm. And uh, when they are similar, then uh, they're kind of compatible. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a way, if uh, you look at it from a simplistic point of view, that uh, if we're going to give you blood for blood transfusion, then you have to match, uh, for example, A and A, uh, for instance. So if you are resus positive, then uh, if you come across blood that is uh, resus negative, that individual with a negative blood group could potentially react to your positive uh, factor. And that's how it matters. That means that if a mother is pregnant and she's resus positive, and then the baby is negative, so what implication does that have? So in in most instances, it's the other way around, Mm -hmm. that uh, the mother is negative, and if you are a resus negative blood group, and your body interacts with uh, resus, positive blood group, you produce what we call antibodies. Mm -hmm. Uh, These are special chemicals in the body that uh, recognize something that is foreign Mm -hmm. and try to fight or break it down. So a mother who is resus negative and a baby who is resus positive, the mother will uh, identify that baby as potentially attacking and therefore will produce antibodies Mm -hmm. that then cross into the baby to attack the red cells of the baby. To prevent that attack of the red cells, what is done? What you would do is uh, to introduce what we call uh, immune globulins. So an immune globulin is uh, an antibody uh, that neutralizes uh, the antibodies that would have been uh, produced by the mother. Now, as I said, antibodies would be chemicals that are produced naturally to try and fight or fend off. So when you neutralize them, then uh, this reaction is uh, uh, kind of averted. Mm-hmm. How, how, how do you introduce how do you introduce it? Is it through a job or how is that done? It's generally an injection, yeah, just uh, underneath the skin. The injection is done at what point of, uh, during what point of pregnancy? Uh, it can be done at any point, depending on what we refer to as uh, immunizing events. Mm-hmm. So there will be certain times in pregnancy when the risk of the baby's blood crossing into the mother is uh, increased. For example, if there is bleeding in pregnancy, as early as uh, 12 weeks, um, and the mother is restless negative, mm-hmm. you would give the, the injection to neutralize that. The risk also increases as the pregnancy advances. Mm-hmm. So routinely, we give the injection at around 28 weeks of gest- gestation. Mm-hmm. And that can last for about uh, uh, 12 weeks. So the mother is undelivered by 40 weeks, uh, a second injection may be given. What about in an instance where a mother gets a jab during the first pregnancy but does not take have a jab during the second pregnancy? Does that have any implication? Yes, actually the injection is given to try and prevent complications in a subsequent uh, pregnancy. Mm-hmm. So that uh, if uh, you prevent the mother producing the antibodies or reacting to the baby's blood group, and uh, if it's found that the baby had a resus negative blood group after birth, then it would be that it was not necessary 
the injection is given. However, because we may not know what the baby's blood group is before birth, then uh, we, we would give it. However, if the baby is born and is raised as negative like the mother, and the mother didn't receive an injection, then that has no effect. What if it's the other way? If the other way around, there is a risk that, uh, especially at the time of delivery, because that's the time of maximal uh, exchange of blood from the baby into the mother, uh, then there is a significant risk that the mother would uh, react. And uh, that would be of danger to a subsequent pregnancy where the baby might be recess uh, positive. So again, we wouldn't know and we would uh, monitor that pregnancy for potential uh, reaction. So there is a special blood group in the event that uh, the mother has been exposed mm -hmm. and they have been, we call it isoimmunized, meaning that uh, they have now reacted and you can't really reverse that when it's happened. Mm -hmm. So you monitor the amount of antibodies being produced by, by the mother, which will give you an indirect indication mm -hmm. of potential destruction of the baby's uh, blood cells. But there are also tests that we can do on the mm -hmm. baby to see that the baby is healthy. And uh, we now have what we call non-invasive testing, where we would do a special ultrasound scan mm -hmm. to look at the speed of blood flowing through the brain. And uh, if the blood is flowing normally, then it means that uh, the baby is all right. If uh, the blood is moving very, very quickly, meaning that the baby is trying to compensate to deliver oxygen to the tissues, mm -hmm. then that may mean uh, the, the baby is uh, getting unwell. That means that if a if, uh, mother does not have the injection during a second pregnancy, would it have the effect on the third pregnancy? What would that be? Only if uh, the mother is uh, then immunized mm. or uh, if they actually react to the baby who is uh, recess positive. So if the mother misses the injection and they have a baby who is recess positive and they go ahead and react. So not all of them who are mm. having a recess positive baby mm. uh, would be immunized in that way. But we don't take the risk. So we would usually uh, administer the injection to everybody. But if then they are unlucky that they react, then that means for subsequent pregnancy, mm -hmm. we have to monitor to ensure the baby remains well. And if we see signs that the baby is becoming unwell, depending on how far the pregnancy is gone, mm -hmm. because the biggest effect is breaking down the baby's red blood cells. So it will cause something called anemia mm -hmm. or, or low blood levels. If the pregnancy is not well advanced, there are interventions that you could do, including a blood transfusion to the baby. And if the baby has reached a gestation where they could be safely delivered, mm -hmm. then at that point you would deliver them. For the test, is it a normal routine during antenatal clinic or is it something that the doctor thinks maybe we should do this test? So to avoid missing out on uh, these tests, we've come up with uh, a global combination of tests. We call them the antenatal profile. Mm -hmm. So most labs, when we say the antenatal profile, uh, it will include the blood group, the recess factor, and uh, infection screening, for example, hepatitis, mm -hmm. HIV. For those who turn recess negative, a majority of labs will do a reflex, uh, what you call indirect Coombs test, and that is to try and see whether this pregnant lady is already exposed or immunized previously, because um, even events such as a miscarriage can potentially uh, cause you to react to a recess positive baby. Thank you so much. Anything else you'd like to add? Obviously. The recess blood group uh, uh, question is particularly important, uh, but it's also riddled with a few uh, um, myths and misconceptions. Uh, for example, it's not true that uh, if uh, your partner has a different recess blood group, then you will have problems getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. The recess factor does not determine whether you will uh, get pregnant or not. It also does not account for miscarriage. So those who lose a pregnancy in the first three months, mm -hmm. for instance, 
will be for other reasons and not the racist factor. Thank you for staying with us. If you've not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe using the subscribe button below. You could also ring the bell to get notifications whenever we upload new content. Until next week, stay safe and goodbye.